Hello, how are you doing today? Well, I hope very good. Not too long ago, I did a video talking about whether you can lose your salvation or not. And I quoted uh, from Hebrews 6. And today I want to read something in Revelation. And I want to read about this seventh church from Laodicea, which... Um, John wrote about. And let's listen to what Jesus is saying about that church. Now, I believe that these churches are seven different epochs within the time of the Gentiles. Jesus talks about the time of the Gentiles in... Um, Luke 21, I think 24 or 25. He talks about the time of the Gentiles is from the time when the Jews reject the gospel until Jesus' return. That's 2,000 years. That's the time of the Gentiles. And that time of the Gentiles, 2,000 years, is again divided into sections. And these sections, different epochs or sections, the, the different churches, the seven churches that um, uh, Jesus wrote to, stand symbolically for those times. And the last church, the last epoch or the last section of the church before Jesus returns is, of course, the seventh church. And that is the church of Laodicea. I have been close to that church. I've been in Heraklion, which is today called, it's a, it's a uh, uh, hot springs uh, called Pamukkale in, um, in, uh, uh, in Turkey. And I've been there. And so I was not too far from that church. And the reason why they were talking about um, cream for the eyes, they can't see very good, right? You will see that. It's because that's, that uh, spring, hot springs, has minerals in it that use, they used to make um, creams for the eyes out of. And so I just want to say that before I start reading about that church and again it's in turkey and uh Heraklion, the, the roman uh city was very nearby was destroyed there's still quite a lot of ruins left that they have actually dug out and uh still can see quite a lot of uh like ruins there but this is what Jesus wrote about that church. And yeah, it was a real church and people lived there and there were Christians there all around. I think uh, Colossians, the Colossian, uh, Colis, uh, I think was around there too. But anyways, this is what the angel of the church of Laodicea writes. These are the words of the Amen the faithful, the true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. That's what we are today. Our churches today are neither cold or hot. Because you're lukewarm. I wish you were neither one of them. or the. Oh, I wish you were either one or the other, he says. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Okay. So they're already in the mouth, but he is going to spit them out. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth. Do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. 
I counsel you to buy some from buy from me gold refined in fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness now what is this white uh, uh, white robes well the white robes are actually um, uh, uh, pure because of Christ's blood so that's why white clothes so he's telling them hey you don't have white clothes on you are naked so they're not saved but he's writing it to the church of Laodicea they were Christian supposedly a Christian church and he's saying no you are lukewarm I'm going to spit you out I'm about to spit you out because you neither hot nor cold and, and you are lukewarm and I'm going to spit you out and you're shameful and you're naked okay so you can cover your shame put some white clothes on that is washed in the blood of the lamb and salve to put on your eyes and here it is so you can see the self was produced there close to Laodicea Laodicea was not a, a dugout it's I think they're doing a little bit there um, excavation but it's, it's still mostly covered up but they know where it was I drove by so um, Anyways, so this I self came from this place called Pamukale, from these mineral uh, hot springs. They run down the hill and uh, you can see the minerals that make the landscape all white. And they have little puddles, you know, like little uh, terras terraces where the water runs down from one pool to the next it's really a cool place unfortunately i was there in uh, february and it was pretty cold so yeah anyway so that's what he's saying uh, saying those whom i love i rebuke and discipline so be earnest and repent here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Now, this is a, um, already a foreshadowing of Jesus knocking on our door during the rapture when he picks us up. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Do you see? Remember, there's many thrones. There's not just one. He says to sit on my throne. But in Revelation 20, we see that there's many thrones. Just I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whosoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the end church because he is saying to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne to the one who is victorious. So we have to endure to the end. We have to hold on to our salvation to the end. We have to be continue to be connected with the Holy Spirit to the end or else Jesus will spit us out. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they will eat with me. That could refer to the rapture. Jesus will come. He will knock. You don't hear him because you are not prepared. You will stand in front of the door eventually. And it will be too late. He says, those who I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Repent. Well, if you have to repent, maybe you have really, really never followed Jesus. What do you have to repent from? Because you don't see the truth. 
Why don't you see the truth? Because your eyes are covered. Your eyes are closed, thick. That's why he says, get this eye, uh, uh, what is it called again? Salve. Okay? This eye cream. So you can put it in your eyes so you can see again. Of course, you need to have your white clothes first. Washed in the blood of the lamb. But then you have to follow him as well. These people didn't follow him. They were lukewarm. They were neither warm or hot, uh, hot or cold. They were lukewarm and still because they're lukewarm, he's going to spit them out. He had enough. He hadn't had enough of them. So remember we talked about, can we lose our salvation? Well, I think the question is, for many years that I have, if, you know, somebody is really not living for Jesus, is he really saved? That's something we can then ask. If we're lukewarm and we're just swimming along with the world, we go to church on Sundays and on the holidays, but really are not living for Jesus, we're living the same way that the world lives, then guess what? Then maybe we are not serious. Then we are lukewarm. Maybe we then belong to this Laodicean church. Now, we now are having, you know, preparation for Christmas. Everybody is hustling and bustling. And people, I, I listen, I, I try to find something on uh, on uh, uh, the radio, it's Christian music. And it's pretty hard lately to actually find something. Why? Because all Christian stations uh, are preparing for Christmas. And I'm thinking, do they really, really, really know about Christmas? I mean, what? What are they preparing for, really? What are they preparing for? Are they preparing really for Jesus' birthday? Or are they preparing for their buying presents and doing all the stuff that they are doing to prepare for Christmas? And I'm thinking, are they really following Jesus or are they following the world? Are they even worse than lukewarm? Really? And believe me, I cannot find one Christian station that says, wait a minute, no, Jesus was born in September. We're not celebrating the Christmas, Santa Claus Christmas, that the world is celebrating. Sorry, I had to bring that in. Okay? Sorry. But that's what I have to go through too right now. This false, fake Christmas season. Ho, 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 ho. Let's go and sit on Santa's lap. Yeah, that's what Christmas is about, people. Let's put up, uh, uh, you know, the Christmas tree and, yeah, and fill the stockings with all kinds of crap. Yeah, what kind of present have not have I not bought yet? Yeah, and it's pretty hard for me to listen to that kind of stuff. So I'd rather not listen to, at this point, Christian stations anymore. Yeah, they have Christian song or Christmas songs, right? They talk about Jesus. But they also talk about, oh, the hustle and bustle they're going through. Ho, 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 ho. That's all so-called Christians are doing that. They're celebrating Christmas. They're not celebrating Christ's birthday. They bring that in once a month. Oh, we're celebrating Christ's birthday. But hey, if they're really celebrating Christ's birthday, shouldn't they know that Christ's birthday is in September, even though we don't know 100% where on what day? But as we, at least we know, hey, it's not at Christmas. You know, and then when we have a Christian station, maybe we should not bring it up. Not bring it up at all. But, oh well, what can I say? Again, there's nothing wrong in putting up whatever you want to put up. 
decorating your house. But as long as you're not, you know, you're honest. You're honest. Be honest what you're celebrating. Be honest. And that is exactly maybe what the angel is talking about here. Okay? These are the words of the Amen even to the angel of the church of Laodicea. So the Amen is saying that Jesus himself, the ruler of God's creation, himself was saying that to the church of Laodicea. Oh my goodness. It should be a warning. A warning. A warning because the time is so close. If you want to be picked up by Jesus here very soon, people, get serious. Get serious about what you believe. Get serious what you celebrate. All I want you to be honest. Okay? And that's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be honest. If you decide, okay, you know what? I love Christmas. Well, then do your Christmassy things. If that's what you want to do, but be honest. Don't say you're actually celebrating Christ's birthday and then you buy presents for everybody else. That's not being honest. If you celebrate Christ's birthday, that's all you're going to do. All. Okay? That's all. No hustle and bustle about the food. No hustle and bustle about buying presents. No hustle and bustle about putting up a tree. It all falls away. All the hustle and bustle meeting with your family. It's all unimportant when you actually celebrate Christ's birthday. Really do. But then you have to ask yourself, also honestly, when was Jesus born? When was he born? Most likely he was born in September. We all should know that by now. But no, we don't want to know that, do we? Because that will put definitely a damper on our celebration. And people continue to live in denial. Yes. Oh, yeah, we're Christians, all right? We're definitely Christians. Hey, and I have to say I'm guilty. I, I used to do it too. I used to do it. And I'm still very split with my family because my family wants to celebrate Christmas. And it's not easy because I love my family. It's not easy. I think my daughter has a hard time with it. But don't know what to say. I can't say that Christmas is celebrating the birth of Jesus. Can't say that. So then we have to think, okay, do we celebrate it like the world? Like the 4th of July? Let's admit it. It's another, you know, pagan, another worldly holiday. Fine. I, I, have a hard, I don't have a hard time with that one. Okay, all your Christian Christmas songs play in September and all your crazy ho-ho-ho songs, you know, play at Christmas. I don't mind. Anyways, I was talking about, really, about this Church of Laodicea and... Really show you again that God will spit you out. You think you're a Christian? Then that is exactly what he's saying. Yeah, I'm going to spit you out. Because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. So, yes, this is a short video. Short video, people. Let me know what you think. I'm always interested in hearing from you. I love your comments. And I know on YouTube, 
I don't know how many people. Um, I don't think my uh, videos will go out on YouTube. So um, I'm very thankful for BitChute, having my channel on BitChute. Um, anyways, but hey, let the Holy Spirit guide you because that is how you will find or how you did find my channel. Always, always let the Holy Spirit guide you.